And welcome back. Season one, episode 110 of the Pull Up Podcast Show. And obviously, this is your host is with the most. This is your guy, the one and only Coach Tony. You know, tonight's guest hails from us from the world of HBCU. But we're going to look at it from a medical perspective. But before we do that, Val, drop. It's the Pull Up Podcast. It's the Pull Up Podcast. It's the Pull Up Podcast. Pull up, pull up. It's the Pull Up Podcast. It's the Pull Up Podcast. It's the Pull Up Podcast. Pull up, pull up. Bounce the boys and Coach Tony, you know. It's the Pull Up Podcast. So, so. I say it, bounce the boys and Coach Tony, you know. It's the Pull Up Podcast. So, so. It's the Pull Up Podcast. It's the Pull Up Podcast. It's the Pull Up Podcast. So. Man, welcome back to the Pull Up Podcast Show. Your guy, the one and only, Coach Tony. Tonight, make sure you do one thing for me. That's like the show, share the show, and more importantly, subscribe to the show. It's one of the hottest sports shows here the land, and we're glad to have you tonight on the Pull Up Podcast Show. Tonight, I guess, hell from the world of the HBCU in the medical field, but we're going to mix sports and medicine and show you how that all plays out. He is an orthopedic surgeon. He's also a sports medicine specialist. He's a motivational speaker, kind of like myself. He's a motivational speaker. He's also a host of his own podcast called Time Out with the Sports Doctor. Ooh, man, that's tonight. We're going to put them both together. He's a graduate of HBCU, Xavier, New Orleans University. He's also a graduate of the Howard University Medical School. And then he's on staff at Jackson State University. And he won that you know he's a member of the illustrious Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Spring out my guy, Dr. Derek Burgess. But before we do that, let's check out a little clip on him real quick. Welcome back to another episode of Time Out with the Sports Doctor Podcast, where life, sports, and medicine intersects. We are glad that you are part of this growing community where we strive to help you strengthen your mindset, help you grow your assets, and help you achieve whatever level of success that you want for your life. Go to our website at drderekthesportsdoctor.com where you can find all the latest content and you can also follow us on our social media channels. Now, let's get into this episode. Man, cuz, what's good with you, baby? Hey, what's going on? Hey, you know I got to love you, man, because it's basketball night. and one of the biggest basketball nights in, in, in the country on right now. Absolutely. I feel like I'm on the sideline where I'm missing half of the game, you know. I know. Ain't that right? <laughs> that funny. <laughs> and, you know, I'm already in coach's mode, so I'm screaming at the, at, at, at the broadcast right now, everything going up and down. So, Welcome to the Pull Up Podcast Show, man. I'm glad you take a moment out your schedule to join us tonight, kind of educate the people a little bit as we talk about intersection of sports and medicine and all that. So, you know, as we get started here, let's just tell everyone a little bit about your background, where you're from, uh, where you come from, and so forth and so on. Sure. As you mentioned, born and raised Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Um, left home when I graduated from high school, went to Xavier University of Louisiana in New Orleans. And then I went to D.C. for Howard University College of Medicine and then did my surgery training there as well. Uh, for 10 years, I was there and I did a year of fellowship. Fellowship is where you specialize after you graduate and you're a doctor. And then I was an orthopedic surgeon. I did an additional year of training where I only treated athletes and specialized in sports procedures, um, arthroscopic surgeries, uh, ligament reconstruction, ACL ligaments. We all know about ACLs in, in basketball, soccer football players. So I did that for a year. And now I'm 10 years into practice. Um, and I am a assistant professor in orthopedic surgery. And also, as you mentioned, team physician for a lot of the local high schools, as well as the Jackson State University. Oh, man, let's go. Let's, let's rewind this tape. Let's go back way back into them young days before you, you got to this mountain real quick here. Back in high school, did you have uh, the opportunity to play sports? Were you playing sports at that time? Yeah, so I was a three-sport athlete growing up. Um, at sophomore year of high school, I decided to stick with 
trek and football, but sports have always been a, a part of my life from the age of seven or eight going up. And, you know, growing up in our neighborhood, youth sports was always at my house every day. So every football day in the backyard. backyard. <laughs> you go get it in. <laughs> Basketball on the court. So Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What are your, what are your, you know, I, I go, I get a, a lot of times, I get a lot of questions to me. I get a lot of people uh, now that I've moved away from the college sideline into the high school, uh, me and the AD, sometimes some of the parents go back and forth, as you just mentioned. What do you think is the appropriate number of sports as a kid is playing in high school? Because I gave my own opinion, and I thought exactly where your cutoff time was. I said, once you get to that sophomore year, um, in my personal opinion, you probably want to couple the sports that work great. Like I'm a basketball coach, love, love kids that play volleyball, love kids run track and field because the jumping and the running and the conditioning. But what are your thought processes on in terms of the number of sports? Do you have one or it doesn't matter? So I'll just keep it kind of in general. So early on, kids that are in youth sports, we usually encourage them to play multiple sports because plenty of studies have been shown to show that kids that are playing multiple sports tend to be better athletes. So one thing we're seeing now is single sports specialization, especially in basketball and in baseball, where kids are playing that same sport. And that's setting them up many times for the overuse injury. So cross training is important as well as letting kids be kids. You know, we used to be out, as I mentioned, playing in the backyard, playing on the, on the driveway every day. That's missing now. So as yep. kids tend to get older, and you might say that, okay, this kid's going to be a basketball player, this kid's going to be a volleyball player. Usually, ninth to 10th grade is where we start to see the athletes specialize more so in one or maybe two sports, because you still have many athletes that have the ability to play two sports, even in college. So, oh, yeah, 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 that's good. Hey, Wise, checking in tonight, baby. What's going on? And my girl, Bella, thanks for checking in as we got my guy, Dr. Derek Burgess, sitting in here with Coach Tony on the Pull Up Podcast show talking about everything from sports injuries to medicine and how they intersect with one another. Now, when you're sitting there and you're playing ball and you're coming out of Muscle Shoals High School at that time, and you mentioned that by your sophomore year, you, you start to streamline it down and say, hey, here's the direction I'm going to go. When did medicine kind of come into play? Was it later on once you got to college? Or did you kind of have that early love for the medicine? How did that come about? Yeah, so almost the same time, about junior, sophomore, junior year in high school, I decided, hey, I want to be a doctor. And at the same time, I was starting to realize that I'm probably not going to be a professional athlete. So junior, senior year, I wanted to start to focus more on academics. And I feel like that's a piece that's really missing many times with athletes is the emphasis of, ath of academics in your overall career. And I talk to my athletes all the time to let them know at some point the ball is going to start bounce, stop bouncing you have to hang up the cleats and what's next. So um, right. at that point, I knew that I wanted to do medicine and I started to get interest from Xavier. And, you know, I knew I wasn't going to, they didn't even have a football team. So playing college football was being a professional as far as medicine was more important than can you, continuing as an athlete, whether it be as a junior college or at a division three that I also had offers at. Yeah. And, you know, the crazy part about that is, uh, I talk about that with a lot of my athletes, and that's funny you mentioned that uh, in terms of the intersection side of the house. So that plan B of yours was an early plan B, you know, and in other words, that plan B that was early plan B got switched around, and that plan B became the plan A because we know that B would be there. You could probably had a, a great opportunity, play the small school, go do some stuff like you said, but then down the road it may have taken a little longer because you probably would have focused on that plan A a little bit longer on the sports side. Um, I just talked to a couple of kids a few weeks ago, and I said, hey, man, you, you're good. If you got that plan B that supersedes that plan A, then just go professional on that plan B. And then when you get back to your 10-year reunion, it's not how you got there. It's just as long as you arrive. Uh, Absolutely. You, you start to see that a lot now that you're in the high school setting where you're at able to give those uh, advisor, advisory and, and some of the young kids? Sure. So I challenge my athletes daily. Um, many times I'll ask them, they come in to see me for a knee problem or a shoulder problem. And sure, we address that. But before we leave, 
I'm going to ask you about your grades. And most of the time, the first time it's going to catch you off guard, but I'm going to ask you about your grades. I'm going to ask you about um, your ACT or SAT score. And if you're an elite athlete, we're going to even have a discussion about the clearinghouse. Do you know what the clearinghouse is? Because if you haven't made a certain ACT or have a certain GPA, it doesn't matter if you're a five-star athlete or a three-star athlete, you are going a certain route. You cannot go division one if you cannot check those boxes. So I don't discourage kids to say, you know, some people say, oh, you're not going to be a pro. You're not going to be able to play in college. I say, well, what after that? You know, so let's just play this out. You're 18 now and you're going to have a great career. You know, you're going to even be LeBron James. You're going to play until you're 38. But what are your plans for the next 30 years of your life? You know, I always ask them, how long are you going to play? Oh, probably about 36, 37. Okay, so good. So what are you going to do after basketball? Or what are you going to do after football? So I don't discourage them, but I also allow them to start thinking beyond the basketball court. Well, that's good. You know, and I think you just hit an important thing. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, that's why I appreciate it. I talk to a lot of the college coaches, clinics, uh, especially the younger coaches, because I get a lot of younger parents that want to blame the high school coaches based on whatever. And I I sometimes ask them, "Do do you know, do you understand the clearinghouse? And there are two separate clearinghouses. For those that are watching the show tonight, you've got the NAIA clearinghouse, and then you have the NCAA clearinghouse. Uh, the NCAA clearinghouse takes care of Division One, Division Two, because D3 doesn't need one. And then the NAIA has one because some of those schools can still offer scholarships. So, you know, and, and it's very important that when you see that and, and you're in that seat that you are, I like the fact that matter if you asking the kids about their grades, then you turn around and try to figure out where they are. Because I look at it sometime and I said, you can either be good in multiple things or you can trim it down and be great in one. Do right. you see a lot of your athletes, uh, once they graduate from high school or going to college, some of the ones that listen to you come back and say, hey, man, thanks for that great advice? Yeah, I mean, I have conversations with some of them. And, you know, especially I'm really close to some of my athletes. You know, you don't necessarily want to be really close to your orthopedic surgeon, but life happens, right? So if you have that opportunity, why not form a relationship? So I'll just name some of my athletes. You know, they won't mind. Tremaine Crosby, Keon Howard. These are some athletes that you know of who I've formed really lifelong relationships through them coming to treatment. And I've still, they still feel confident enough in me now to reach out to me when they have something going on in their lives or when they're in school and they have a question, or if you're away and you don't have the treatment you need to really reach back and have, because there's a relationship there. And I really appreciate having that with my athletes. I mean, that's great. Checking in tonight is my homeboy who run the switchboard for us on in a little talk on Tuesday. My guy, the one and only Kevin Springer. Thanks for checking in. Make sure if you guys got a question, for Dr. Derek tonight, please put it in the box tonight so we can make sure we get to your questions this evening. But, you know, Derek, another thing is that don't take it lightly. You know, and I know you talk about the athletes you talk to and help out. I mean, talk a little bit about the guys at the next, next level because you were working with quite a few of the athletes from the Pelicans and some from the New Orleans Saints as well. Talk a little bit about that on the professional side of the house, the attitudes and where they've gone and where you see some of those athletes as compared to the guys you're trying to get to that point. Sure. I've been blessed to treat a lot of high level um, athletes and truthfully, their professional mentality starts. You can tell a high school athlete that's going to be a great college player or a great professional player. I've been blessed to be around great talent, both at Jackson State University, as well as in my training when I work with the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, But true players that treat it as a job, they take it very seriously. And that separates you because talent will get you so far, but your work ethic has to meet your talent level at some point. Exactly. You know, that's funny that you said that uh, LeBron James has a brand new podcast he's out on, and he talks about that, the mentality and the difference between the kid that is trying to make it to that level and the kid that's trying to put himself in position to get to that level. Um, It's the sacrifices. You know, we talk about, you know, him and all of his homeboys that played in Akron. You know, obviously LeBron was a breakout uh, of the crew, you know, and then he now got Rich Paul and all his guys on his side. You know, and he said he the difference that for him was uh, back a few years ago when he broke into, as we say, the basketball world. All he knew about was basketball. But 
he came from that broken family. He came from that broken tree. And that was his way out. He didn't see going to the sock hops or he didn't see going to the local dances or hanging out doing this or hanging out doing that. What he saw was, hey, man, he get off that basketball court, get some rest and go right back at it and go work out. You know, and now as we see the quote unquote and you're getting there, you see a lot of it, the AAU world. And when it comes to female athletes, there's something I think close. I want to say maybe a quarter of a million ACL surgeries a year and, and females make up what about three fourths of that. So we see a lot of ACL injuries in our female athletes specifically, or most more majority of those are going to be in the cutting and pivoting sports like soccer um, and basketball. We see some in volleyball, but mainly basketball and soccer are going to be the sports that we see a lot of ACLs. So neuromuscular training is something that I specialized in. In my resident, excuse me, in my fellowship with Dr. Frank Noyes, he wrote a program, Sports Metrics, that you did the training for as well, of how to train these athletes, how to train these young ladies, how to land and cut in a proper form so that they can cut down on some of these ACL injuries. Because it's devastating when you're dealing with 13 or 15-year-old young ladies and you're telling them, hey, your knee will never be the same. You're going to be out for a year. This surgery is going to set you back, uh, you know, six to nine to 12 months before you even think about getting back to your sport. So there's a, not only from a physical standpoint, but from a psychological standpoint, that's a major impact on a young lady or oh, a yeah. young male. Ooh, been down that road. Hey, listen, we're having a great conversation tonight with the one and only Dr. Derek uh, on the Pull Up Podcast show. We're going to take a break right here at the first quarter. Palace pay a few bills. We'll be right back. Are you a small business owner looking to grow? Introducing the KeySpot mobile app. I'm Cynthia McAllister, owner of the IT company Quality SAT. Since 2016, we have been supporting small businesses and help them promote and share their businesses, services, and events across the country. KeySpot is more than just an app. We are a network providing community. KeySpot connecting communities and supporting small businesses. Man, welcome back to the one and only the Pull Up Podcast show. Tonight we got the one and only Dr. Derek Burgess on with us, talking time out with the sports doctor, tying a little bit of things together. So you're at Jackson State, you know, and we all know, everyone knows, no secret, you know, the big, big picture there a few years ago was none other than prime time himself. So through that, how has post prime time been since he's moved on to Colorado? So as you see, the show grows on. The female athletes are still playing really well. The male athletes football team had a great season last year and have a lot of recruits back, have a lot of players back. So they're going to continue to play at a high level. As you see, the Sonic Boom. Uh, played in the Super Bowl. So there's a lot yes. of attention on Jackson State University. Did he bring a lot of um, coverage to that school? Absolutely. But I think that the university, the athletic director, has done a great job. And also Coach T.C. Taylor has done a great job of keeping that program afloat. Um, last year, you know, a lot of people left. But being able to do what he did in his first year of coaching, I thought was phenomenal. And they're reloaded this year. So be ready. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and speaking of being reloaded, you know, I think you got my little cousin right there with you, too, Miss Suzette. How you doing, young lady? Hold on just a second. I actually got her in my earpiece. Hold on just a second. Let me see. Slide on over there. Slide on over there. How you doing tonight? Good. Well, that's wonderful. Speaking of JSU, you had an opportunity to go up on the university and, and take a look and, and, and see all that. What are your thoughts and feelings? You, you're a young basketball player coming up right now in the middle school side of the house, correct? Yes, sir. What school are you at right now? Madison how, Mill. How did, uh, did you end up falling in love with basketball? I know you're looking at several sports and basketball became that. Uh, was it just a, uh, the opportunity just to be around it? Uh, and you just say, man, this is something I could do, or you just kind of naturally say, hey, I like this game? Um, so, like, before I played basketball, I just played everything that, like, I could do, but basketball was not my main priority. And then 
we started going to games and that at that time the women weren't as good as they are now and I would go to a lot of boys games and stuff like that and then like over the years like whenever dad like before he came to JSU I was like maybe I want to do something with basketball and maybe I want to focus on basketball more because I saw like how they can play it. That's awesome. So what, what do you think about Coach Tamika Reed? Because she's had a great run, back-to-back -back coach of the year in the SWAC. And as as as, as Dr. Derek said, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people, and, and you know this, Derek, a lot of people was banking on JSU to drop. Tom Dion walked off the yard. They right. they just Tommy walked off the yard. They act like he was taking the entire stadium and everything with him. <laughs> but it was awesome to see what Coach Reed did. On that, what did you guys think about that? Um, I'm very surprised that she could do it back to back. I know that she could do it. I know the team that she has. She's a phenomenal coach. And that summer, I went the summer that we first moved out here. We were in the house for like a couple of weeks, and Dad's like, "Hey, you want to go do this um like little camp that they have in JSU?" I didn't really like. I wanted to go, but I didn't want to go because I didn't know anybody. But, like, I went there, and I just saw, like, how she coaches her girls and how, like, her girls coaches us, like, was coaching us. And, like, I learned a lot, like, how they're determined and stuff. And then, like, now I met people that were at that camp, and some of the people that like, I'm very close with that are on my team that now like, we have a good relationship with, like, the basketball side because we know how to communicate better, and we've learned from her, and I hope to go back. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, and, and that is that is that's really nice. So you end up saying, hey, this is something I like to do. Basketball is where I want to be at. Had an opportunity to get in the house, been up there, dad took you to camp. Uh there's a lot of stuff you can't do and uh and all of that. And uh I want to make sure that that I want to make sure everyone hear you. So I want you to speak up a little bit for me so they can make sure they hear you out here as well. But the question I want to ask you is that looking at basketball down the road, where would you like the opportunity of where your dad has the ability to make sure that you are being in a position to, one, make sure you got the right training, two, right nutrition, and three, making sure you are in the right position. Where would you like to see basketball in the future take you? Um, I would like to see basketball take me to, like, college because I feel like I play two sports now. And I feel like I could have a future with basketball and, like, seeing how people like Kaylin Clark, Angel Reese, and Fla J and Michaela Williams and all of them, how they are, like, going on and making a platform for themselves. I feel like if I continue in, like, doing hard work, I could, like, get myself to that. Plus, you got me right here. We talking about NIL money. Oh, we talking Lord. About, come on now. We talking about NIL. It, it, it's Hey, there is no athlete, and, and Dad will tell you, there's no athlete in terms of signing scholarships that don't ask about the NIO anymore. And Caitlin Clark right here, she's putting on a show, 30, 35 seconds left to go on the game. Iowa's up right now, 94-84, uh, big hurt. time game. So, you know, uh, and that's good. So what, what position do you play right now, Suzette? Oh, uh, so basically I can play mostly everything because of our teams. Like the younger okay. team. But like I normally play forward and point guard. Okay. Now how tall are you? I'm five seven. Ooh. Well, you're growing right now. You know, I can't wait to get it in. So, you know, well, listen, I thank you very much for joining the show tonight on the Pull Up Podcast show because I want to know, I want everybody to know who you are before that name come up and they say, man, I remember on your show years ago, Coach. I want to make sure I introduce you to them right now. You know, and, and Dr. Derek, you know, the question I got for you on that, speaking of the women's basketball right now, you know, JSU, they gave it a big shot. The girls tried their best. Uh, unfortunately, they lost by 22 points against UConn first round, uh, having to play against the number one seed in the tournament. Obviously, we know who UConn is with Paige. And back when she's back, she just came off of an ACL injury. We know that. And now she's returning to play. And then, like you said, it set her back a complete year. She had to miss a year of school right now. So do you think, looking at the SWAC, that you you guys will have a team in the future that will have a possible run 
that gets past the first round with a nice maybe a 115, a 215 or a 116 upset? Yeah, I think that seeding is very important. Um, if you look at Jackson State's preseason, pre-conference schedule, they played Texas, Oregon State, uh, Kansas State, Miami, Mississippi State. They played like half of their teams were ranked in the top 25. And as you see, Oregon State just got put out, right? And yes. Texas as well. They played Texas. So yep. they did not mess around with their offseason schedule. And then they ran the whole conference in um, the swag play. So if you give them a different seed, if they're seeded eight or nine, then watch out, right? So they went up and played UConn very tough. They got mm -hmm. down early in the game, but if you look at quarters two, three, and four, that was about a five-point differential all the way through the game. Right. Those ladies know how to play ball, and they had depth and size. So I think as they continue to build and you continue to have more of a focus on not only women's sports but also HBCU sports, I think you will see that uh, playing field be more level over time. Oh, yeah, and, and speaking of that, I look at it as your secondary a uh home at HBCU and Howard University. And I'm, I'm very good friends with Coach Kenny Blakeney. I'm, a matter of fact, I'm working to get him on the show to talk a little bit about Howard, HU. Uh, and, and they have proven a point on the men's side, back-to-back -back appearances, played very well down to a three-second game, three seconds on the clock in the game, three opportunities to, to, to make that big shot. You know, the argument comes down sometimes is, do you think, I know they've got to fill at 64. And like football is going to now expand to that, that bigger roster to 12. So now they're talking about basketball possibly moving to 90. What do you wow. think about that? I yes. don't know. that? That's a lot. At some point you have to have a cutoff. I mean, as yeah. far as travel, think about the fact that we had to leave Mississippi to go to Connecticut and play them in their home gym. Yes. Right. And then the gym was packed, probably 10,000 people. You could tell from the announcements, they were called one JSU player and one UConn player and the building would just erupt. So you give them home court advantage and have them a higher seed playing a lower seed. And it's, the referees. <laughs> you know, so right now you have to level that really to get a good competition, I think. So I think the women's game, I think this is the first time I remember the tournament, the men's tournament and the women's tournament going on at the same time. It you know, they said the apart. good thing about it is last year, and, and, and Suzette, you're gonna love this, and then the last year, 10 million people, 10 million people watch the LSU-Iowa National Championship game. So this is how I drew it up, and it's coming because Val will tell you, for, <clears throat> for promotional purposes only, if you follow my rules, you may be able to pay a couple bills off. But you're looking at what I just explained today on the radio this afternoon. Iowa-LSU, this rematch is going to be a huge, huge rematch because they were looking for one another. You got two superstars in Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. Now, I said that I will move on. I predicted they will move on by seven. They're up by seven right now with seven seconds on the clock. Then you're looking at Don Staley on the other side. I don't think NC State's going to be able to stick nowhere near uh, South Carolina. No, no pun intended, but I think Don rolls on big time, maybe plus 15 there. But the team that no one's looking at is my girl. Juju Watkins and that USC Trojan who's getting ready, that game's getting ready to come on right now after Iowa. And you potentially right now, Derek, you may potentially for the first time have a number one and a number one seed on the women and then a possible UConn Purdue number one, number one on the men for the first time. And I can't tell you when two number one seeds, men and women meet up for the national championship game. And because they have now merged the games together so closely you now got basically men and women on top of each other for almost a week as basketball is flowing out. That's a yeah. good thing. It's a beautiful thing. And as you mentioned these names, these are people that Suzette's looking up to now. You know, she knows, you know, Juju, and she knows Jada, what's her name? Jada Williams. Jada Williams that plays for Arizona. So she is watching these girls and have seen them come from high school and make the jump immediately into the college ranks and be able to produce. So it's great for young aspiring women that are coming behind them, what they're doing in the game right now. Oh, yes. Yeah, and, and, and Suzette, you know, like you mentioned and dad mentioned earlier, you know, it's the getting up, you know, I had a young man on the show a few weeks ago in camp, uh, camp out of Knoxville and 
he literally stayed on half a show because he said, Coach, I love you, man, but I got to go to bed, you know. Right. But he had to go getting to up, standing those books, who's that, doing the right thing, jumping that rope every day, putting in those jump shots, shooting. No, you don't have to shoot two and three, four hundred at, at your age. But getting up 25, 30 shots right now, getting used to that repetition, start to build you a repetition of daily activities with basketball at least three to four times a week. And everything else would just kind of come on that because one day you may be sitting up here playing with this young lady right there, Miss Don Staley. Because if everything works out, I'm about to bring you up into Nashville with me and finish up your school up here with me. So that's how we do. But listen. I want to thank you guys. Appreciate the time and opportunity. But before I let you go, I need to ask you two questions here. One, on the women's side of the house, Doc, and also Suzette, who do you guys have in the national championship game for the women? Um, for me, for that, I mean, I was sad, but we already know who won. It was um, Iowa. They're in the Final Four. And I'm ready to watch the um, the USC game against UConn, but I feel like if you do, can like do her thing, and but you have uh, Paige Buckner, that yep. she's a phenomenal player, so it comes down to that last quarter, and then you'll figure out who's like going to be going against Iowa. Okay, and who do you got, Doc? I say South Carolina until proven otherwise. <laughs> okay, yeah, and uh, uh, on my side of the house, I got South Carolina and Iowa. I think Don Staley revenges that loss. Once again, that's going to be made for TV. You can put that on Netflix, HBO, Showtime, and Stars because it's going to be ready to go. And what about the men's side of the house? What do you all think on the men's side of the house? Who do you think going to finish up on the men? So I'm going to go with I laughed at my son when he filled out his bracket two weeks ago and he put North Carolina State to win it all. But – He's smarter than he looks, so oh North Carolina God. State. <laughs> Look, I need a little Derek on my show. I need, he should have told me about that on FanDuel. I could have cleaned up by right now. Yeah. Man, and who you got on the men's side? Is that who you like? Um, so I watch more girls than I watch boys, but I watched this last couple of days of it, and I think that NC State is going to win it all because they have that big old guy that's going to give, like, make them big old passes, DJ. and they're going to get all the shots. That's right. And I got Purdue. Pull it out with UConn. You, Big and, and you know how that go. And we're going to talk about that as we come back. I want to thank the one and only Dr. Derek Burgess and my cousin, little cousin, who y'all going to know about her in the future, Miss Suzette. Thank you guys for coming in, spending some time with the one and only Coach Tony on the Pull Up Podcast show. Val, it's halftime, girl. Let's pay some bills. We'll be right back. I've always thought about how my mom has supported me in any creative endeavor. How beautiful was it for your mom to be the superhero in your life and show up in your creative ventures with this book? People ask her to sign the book more than they ask me to sign the book. Sometimes I step to the side, I take their picture. And, um, you know, we just, we have to celebrate our mothers. We got to celebrate our beginning. Uh, so she comes out with me. Every event, she is there. Even when I tell her she does not need to come, she will show up in the parking lot. And I'm like, oh, okay, you coming? Okay. I'm like, all right. right. And oh, she got a bottle of wine in her hand. What yeah. in the world? Why are you giving her alcohol? Don't. No, I'm just saying. She showed up in the parking lot. She got a bottle of wine, nice wine. She's going to set it down. She's ready for the show, Val. You know what I'm saying? Because the funny part about it is, CJ, I've actually talked to Val. I thought about, you know, writing a book myself called My Man's in there. But, I love uh, it. You know, and, and <laughs> look at that. <laughs> My man's in them. My Can man's you in them. But you, you got to read the book. You got to read the <laughs> book. But it, it's, a, it's a play. CJ, I, I apologize because Val should have dropped some old Dub C so you could have came out crip walking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not flamed up right now. I got to hold on. <laughs> trying to get me shot. <laughs> Going back to school tomorrow. Like, I, I saw you. I saw you, Miss Charles. I saw you. <laughs> I mean, I can't grip walk, but please, you know, but I'm kind of, you know, I'm authoring right now. <laughs> you guys are funny.
Man, welcome back to the one and only The Pull Up Podcast show. We have enjoyed a nice interview sitting down with Dr. Derek Burgess and time out with the sports doctor on the one and only The Pull Up Podcast show that you got here, Coach Tony. Uh, man, that is absolutely awesome. And my little cousin, Miss Suzette Burgess, you know, as you see, already five, seven, five, eight, middle school coming up, playing three or four positions, already knowing that she wanted to go to the NBA. And more importantly, kids, if you're not listening to what she said, she's already meeting these young women who are already playing college basketball at the level that she wants to be. She's already connecting with them. Come on, we got to do that. We got to make sure we do that. Thank you guys for checking in. We got uh, Springer in the house. Of course, my engineer, Val, the boys with me. Bellows on here, and many of you, I appreciate you stopping by tonight. Make sure you share the show, like the show, and more importantly, subscribe to the show. Now, let's get down to the nitty gritty. This past weekend, we had to come in and enjoy a wonderful weekend of basketball. The women are on right now, so we'll start with the women right now. This weekend, we had some phenomenal game. We had none other than Don Staley herself in South Carolina Gamecocks. They came ready, ready and loaded to play, knocking off Oregon State. Uh, it was just not even a contest early on. You know, they have been winning by plus 15 margin uh, in the tournament, and they did just that again, defeating Oregon State 70 to 58. Um, and that moved uh, South Carolina to 36 and 0. The question for you guys tonight that's listening on here is can South Carolina repeat? And if they can, that means they will have to continue this and go undefeated. The last loss that they had is they're like 70 and 0. So the last loss they had was against none other than my fan favorite in Iowa Hawkeyes and Caitlin Clark. That was the last loss that they had. So it's going to be a bond burner. And speaking of Caitlin Clark, she has just defeated Angel Reese and sent the LSU and Kim Mulkey packing back to Baton Rouge. They 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 gonna holler at y'all at the airport, go meet them and greet them. They had a heck of a run. In the tournament this year, they just got beat early in the night, uh, and that was a great game on. The 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 thing is, you got to look at what Kaitlyn's been doing all season long. You know, she's the nation leading scorer right now. She just passed the tournament scoring. She broke that, and she's averaging. She had 15 assists uh, the other day when they played. She is a phenomenal basketball player, and probably. Not probably, but it's going to be the number one draft pick this year in the WNBA draft uh, coming up uh, down down the road. Uh, the young lady's got a bright future. She's already working with State Farm. She just signed another deal with Pepsi and Gatorade. Uh, it's just phenomenal. Uh, and now Don Staley has got some of her young ladies. Her post player just said tonight that she's entering the WNBA draft. So as you see, these young women are starting to move around. You're now starting to see women's basketball take off, and it's taking off to a whole new level. Now, on the South region, uh, you've got North Carolina State. I don't know what they got in the water over at North Carolina, but they got something in the water because you've got the men and the women that are both in the Final Four, and that is phenomenal. You know, North Carolina State, underdog, uh, on the women's side of the house, they pulled off a big one, knocking off the number one seed in Texas, Longhorns. Uh, yesterday, it was a phenomenal game. I mean, just tremendous. Uh, those young girls, they play their butts off, and now they get an opportunity for the first time since 1998 to go back to the Final Four. So you got to really love exactly what they're doing, and, and their coach is really coaching them up. Now, the game that's interesting to me, is a game that's on right now as I'm watching, I'm talking to you guys, and that is Paige Beckers. You know, as Dr. Derek talked about with injuries, as you just heard him, you know, of almost a quarter million injuries that happen a year, a uh, majority of them are young women coming in through middle school and early high school. And the reason why is they have not learned how to jump, plant, or cut. And that's been the big thing uh, that they've got to do, and they take up a lot of those. Well, well, she went through, she being Paige Beckers at University of Connecticut, uh, as Mark said, he wonders if Angel Reese is going pro, you better believe it. She's not coming back, Mark. You know that. She's out of here. As, 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 as my boy say, she's out of here. She's gone. She has no reason to come back 
with all the up and down things that happened this year, right? All the craziness with Kim Mulkey coach worried about what they're writing about her in the press. And, uh, you know, she won that ring last year. She had a multi-million dollar deal on the NIL side of the house. And then she came back this year to make another run at it. Wasn't able to do it. You know, there's going to be some changes in LSU. There's a couple of kids already talking about leaving. I think Angel Reese is gone, and I think she's top five. Will she be number two in the draft? I doubt it, but she may be number three um, in the draft right now if she goes. But I don't think she will return to LSU. Now, speaking of returning, Paige Becker returned for UConn. And she not only returned, the girl has led them to this Elite Eight game tonight, and the winner moves on to play Iowa. And, you know, you got number three UConn and Gino Aramo. He states that Paige is the best kid in the United States. Now, looking at stat-wise and what she's been doing, she's been putting up better numbers than Caitlin Clark and uh, and Juju. And I'm like, whoa, that's amazing because Juju is killing right now. And uh, and we know that it's been going nuts because of of what we've been looking at in terms of the tournament. On the women's side of the house, it's been a little more predictable. You know, it's usually the number one, number two seeds that go. And this year was no different. They all went down. Like you said, the longest shot in the field was North Carolina State, like on the men's side of the house, who upset Texas. But everyone else was the number one, number two, number three seed that went on to play. So my question to you guys, I just asked the doctor, who do you have on the women's side of the house? to win it all. And I know Mark, you usually always give me some wise. You always got an answer. But I want to know what you guys think. Who do you think on the women's side of the house is going to be a tough knockout? Now, for promotional purposes only, let me give you a couple of things here. The first part of my prediction already came through. I said the L- uh, the Iowa would win tonight. It would be LSU by seven. They beat them by 784. Uh, 77, I think, 94, 94, 87, 84, 77. They won earlier tonight. I also said that South Carolina would move on. I don't think that NC State can handle them. I think they'll win by like plus 15 to move in that championship game. Now, here's the key. We talk about Caitlin Clark. We talk about South Carolina, right? So let's flip the script back to last year. We, we know that the final last year was none other than Angel Reese doing one of these numbers to Kaylin Clark about her ring. Okay, we get that. And I said that uh, Kaylin will revenge herself. She did. But what we did not looking out is that Kaylin Clark put Don Staley in them South Carolina Gamecocks out last year. Now they got to come back. That's the game that everybody wants to see. So if there was 10 million people watching that LSU-Iowa game last year, I'm going to say it's going to be close to 12 to 15 million people watching it this year. Now, Mark says South Carolina is taking the entire women's championship, but I beg to differ. I think that if this young girl who's going to have something to say in Juju Watkins, who's playing right now at USC, this Iowa game is going to be phenomenal. But I think that you're going to see Iowa-South Carolina, and I think you're going to see an overtime game. I think that game goes in overtime. Uh, I do think as as Iowa got the redemption, Back against LSU, I think Don Staley does get the redemption back. As much as I like Kaylin Clark and as much as what she's done, I don't think she gets the ring for senior year. I think South Carolina and Don goes undefeated this year, 38 and 0. They will 37 and 0 this weekend. They'll go 38 and 0 to move on to give Don Staley yet another championship down there in South Cacabaca. So that's what I'm thinking right now, Mark. So I'm going to have to agree with you. And I know you and I see eye, eye to eye on a few things, but it's going to be a solid game. You just make sure you tune in because that game, the thing that beat LSU tonight was pace and conditioning. Iowa got up and down the court they ran. I know a lot of people talk about the Purdue game. We're going to talk about the men's bracket in a moment. But Iowa just flat out, ran, ran, ran. Every time the ball came off the rim, they were running. Every time there was a loose ball, they were running. And I think LSU just ran out of gas. They had everything they can do, but pace and conditioning, as I say, that's the key. You got to understand the pace of play and your body has to be well conditioned. And if you can do those two things, you're good. 
Now, don't get me wrong. Early in the second quarter, Andrew Reese went for a block shot on Caitlin Clark. They called a foul. She picked up her second foul. She fell out of bounds. She sprained her ankle. Who knows? I'm sure Angel's going to say, if my ankle wasn't sprained, we probably would have pulled that out. But it's more than one player. Tonight, Caitlin got an opportunity to share the ball and get her teammates involved. So again, on the women's side of the house, for promotional purposes, you will see South Carolina Gamecocks versus the Iowa Hawkeyes. We're going to take our last break of the night, come back with the fourth quarter. Val, pay some bills. We'll be right back on the Pull Up Podcast show. Uh, Tony, what, what what would you like to ask Terrence? Listening to that trailer, man, it was so cool. When you got a chance to get involved, what were your past experiences? I haven't necessarily done narration and voiceover, but I am a, a songwriter and performer. Which I've done that for a while. And with this project, one, I'm I'm not seasoned enough to know what high eight tapes are. So I'm just pulling off my experiences with elder people in my life and their stories and try to connect that bridge. So I just tried to do that the best that I could. And I'm, I'm happy with how it came about. I'm excited for people to start seeing it and seeing how over these many years it's come full circle, as John said. Terrence hits on a great point. The spirit of the film is based on the spirit of the music and the times of the 90s. That was important that that came across because that was a different frequency of music, you know, back yeah, then. Well, it was it was an exciting, challenging time where you felt the birth of a new musical movement was happening. Ultimately, we actually shot in 13 different locations and had a cast of over 60 people. And then we had this tape this this project that was still in search of an ending and for 30 years i've lied and carried this on my resume as a film that i completed but i bet nobody ever asked me for it but i'm just uh, the, grateful the, the fact that, yeah <laughs> i'm grateful the fact that wendell uh, found these and just wrote such a brilliant narration that really pulled everything together and brought it to some peace after all these years of this unfinished project As we make our last sub of the night, you know, grand, man, Coach put my grandbaby in a game. Hey, welcome back to the one and only Coach Tony, and this is the Pull Up Podcast Show. Been having a great show tonight. Had a phenomenal guest on earlier tonight, and Dr. Derek Burgess on Sports Talk with the Sports Doctor. And he, he, he dropped some knowledge on us of just athletes making sure the academics are in order, making sure your bodies are in order, making sure you have a great routine, and more importantly, Break it down by your sophomore year of high school and find out and determine which two sports that you think that you can excel in and then get great in one of those sports. Try not to spread yourself thin because that's when injuries occur. But at the same time, he also drops nuggets and said, hey, we don't need to play just one particular sport. We need to balance out and play a couple of different sports so that the body gets an opportunity to work different muscle groups. So, man, I respect that. So I appreciate it. Make sure you like us, you share us, and more importantly, subscribe to the Pull Up Podcast Show. And if you need to, like Mark is doing, pull up on me. Man, all right, Mark, let's roll, baby. We talk about this men's bracket. Oh, I couldn't even wear my jersey after I wore it last, last week. Whew, man, I got I may have to go take a leave right now, but the Yukon Huskies, number one, C, Klingman. Uh, fighting the line, I, they could do absolutely nothing to them. They completely annihilated. They dominated the game from start to finish. We never were in the game. We played a couple close. You know, the Hawkins tried to keep us in. Shannon Jr. tried to keep us in. But we are never able to do any of the stuff that we wanted. So, obviously, we don't move on. So, the number one and the number three, they go in. And it, they the UConn devastated us. They came out the locker room. And they went on a 30 to nothing run. Do you hear me? 30 to nothing run against the Illini. Who are, you're talking about the top two teams offensively in the nation. 
So you would think that we would be able to run and score. Wasn't able to do anything in Clingman. And UConn held on. Final score, 77-52, to move on. Now, this is one of the games that was a shocker. Uh, the number six, Clemson. They end up getting into there and then Alabama. Got to go back home for the home state, the family. Dr. Derek, saved from Muscle Shoals, put Alabama on the map, baby, and none other than Mark Sears, Mr. Muscle Shoals himself. Shout out to the North uh, Quad Cities of Northwest Alabama, uh, right outside of Huntsville, about 45 minutes. Sears put Alabama on their back. And Nate Oaks finally gets Alabama to the Final Four for the first time in school's history. Now, you got to remember, last year, they had the Phenom uh, rookie who, who jumped out in Brandon Miller from uh, Tennessee. And now to have Mark Sears, a homebody right there, to get an opportunity to come back home, play for the Crimson Tide, and to put him on as a local kid, absolutely phenomenal. That is, and my hats go off. Uh, got a great family. Uh, he's down there with my relatives in Muscle Shoals, Alabama area, and uh, he's, he's a great kid. Uh, Mark, I know you love your Golden Eagles, man. They just, Marquette just could not hold on. They tried their best. They couldn't hold on, just like North Carolina. And speaking of North Carolina, like you said, Mark, <laughs> your boy, the fan favorite, DJ Burns, the big boy. This is going to be a good game coming up with big DJ Burns in North Carolina State. 6'9, 289. Now, ain't nowhere in the world he's 6'9, 289. He's got to be a Big Mac away from 300. I swear he is. But listen, it's going to be big man on big bond. That's going to be that's going to be a lot of pushing and shoving at the boom boom room. You know what I'm saying? Because you got big Zach Eady, seven foot four, 310. And now you got DJ Burns Jr. That's six nine, at least three oh five, but I'm gonna give him two eighty nine where they listen to that. You know, it's kind of like a kill day height. You put the shoes on, you give them an extra two inches. But it's gonna be it, 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 as Coach Justin just jumped in. He said, "Hey, he, he's the rendition of Michigan State Zach Randolph coming up in here. You know, reincarnated again." But my question to you guys is this: You've got two number one seeds left, opposite of the bracket. And you got a four seed in Alabama that's playing real good, won the SEC tournament. And you got a long shot in Carolina State. And coach right there is having a good, he's going to be coach of the year, should be coach of the year of the entire NCAA, definitely of the ACC. But can one of the underdogs pull off the upset? Can Mark Sears do what he did this past weekend, put Alabama on their back, and drop another 26, 27, 28, because it's going to cost all of those points to get past Klingman and company and UConn. Plus, UConn is very long. They're seven foot four, six, eight, six, nine on the back. Or can baby Shaq, or as Coach Justin say, can baby Zach Randolph Jr. reincarnated? Can they pull off the upset? And can he in the boom boom room? hard enough with big Zach Eady and roll around to get a win. I want to know because for promotional purposes only, I'm going to give you that answer in a few minutes. But here's the thing. The men's game has been going so good lately. You know, there was a lot of back and forth. The day I was on the radio talking today, the SEC fans were upset because Tennessee, they felt uh, it was, you know, Zach Eady, it was 22 fouls in the paint call against Tennessee and Zach Eady only had one or two fouls for the game. But as I explained to them, this time of the year for March Madness is basically the NBA for May and June playoffs. You got to take the hard hat off, man. You ain't going to get those fouls. Nobody's going to just hand you a foul. You got to go in there and take it. It's, it's kind of like a pickup game and you got 19. I'm not about to let you score 21. That's just, that's just how we are. But – Zach Kitty, phenomenal. You see why he was the National Player of the Year back-to-back. So I'm going to pull out of my rabbit's hat, and I'm going to say that Alabama gives UConn a better game than people think that they are going to. But I think UConn pulls that game out. I think Klingman and company moves on. I think they they, they have another uh, – I don't think they win by 15, but I think they win by at least 10. Uh, I think UConn moves on. 
to next uh to to the championship game uh next Monday. And then I think that Purdue moves on to the national championship game. And I think you see for the first time in a long time two number one seeds that are evenly matched. Two kids that's over seven foot four, both post players in six, seven, six, eight range, and solid at the guard play. And I think you're going to see a heck of a national championship game. Dan Hurley is looking to become the first coach since Billy Donovan and my boys with Corey Brewer, Nashville, and those guys, Joakim Nola, and those guys did it at University of Florida in 07, 08. So the question on the, on the, on the, on the map tonight, and, and, and Coach Justin, you, Mark, you know, and wise you guys out here, let me know who you think is going to win on the men's side of the house. I don't need no if, and the bus. I need to know who do you think going to win on the men's side of the house. Mark checks in first. He said, I think UConn is repeating this year because he thinks that that will be a great game as well. So, you know, why do you think that UConn is going to repeat, Mark? I just need to know, do you think it's going to be because of Klingman inside? Or do you think that they're going to have better guard play or better shooting? Because you got to remember, we're talking now 7-4 versus 7-4. And Coach Justin checks in like myself and says, Purdue wins easily. Oh, my goodness. If that's easy, Justin, you know, I, I need to know for promotional purposes only, Coach Allen, I need to know a score. You know, and Mark, what do you think the score is going to be in those in those games? Uh, because it's going to be a tremendous game. And by the way, Val the Voice and, 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 and K Springer, I'll be checking in with you guys because I leave out of here. I am heading to the Final Four. So I make sure I get some good pictures, atmosphere, everything that's going on uh, to check out the games. Uh, of course, my first guest on the Pull Up Podcast show, none other than Quanzo Martin. His son played for the University of Purdue. So I wish them all the luck. Hope they come back. Hope he can get a ring as a young college student and do what his dad was not able to do. <clears throat> Don't mean to throw that at you, Zoe, but be able to come back home as national champs. Um, Mark got a close game. He's got Connecticut over uh, a win in 95-91. High scoring game. So for promotional purposes in Mark's case, you're looking at play the over 185 in Mark's situation. Play the over. I think the over as those games both get out and run, I think the total points would be about 180. I think you play over 180, and I think you take uh, over 180, and I think you take Purdue by three. Purdue by three, I don't think UConn repeats, and for promotional purposes, I think that that's what's going to happen. Uh, Valerie says she predicts UConn. She was hoping to see the fight in the line out like I was, obviously, but she predicts UConn to win it as well. So we got Mark and Val both doubling up on UConn to win. Uh, Coach Justin got Purdue along with me. I think it's going to be a good tournament. You know, uh, once again, you getting this information week after week, hanging out with your boy, none other than the one and only Coach Tony on what? The Pull Up Podcast Show. Make sure you like us. Make sure you share this with your friends. More importantly, make sure you subscribe to the show. Now, we're going to come down to our one last question of the night. On the women's side of the house, who should be the national MVP of the women? And then who should be the national MVP of the men? So I'm going to give you mine. Hands down, on the women's side of the house, hands down, no one has done what Caitlin Clark has done. I love Angel Reese. I love Juju. I love Wally. But none of them have done what Caitlin if she wins the national championship and beats South Carolina this year, she goes down as possibly the best ball player to ever touch a basketball. And I probably haven't said that since I've seen Cynthia Cooper, Cheryl Swoops, and Cheryl Miller play. And that's saying a lot. That's putting her into high. I mean, that's Hall of Fame type stuff right there. Uh, and tonight she dropped 41 and 12 assists, just to let you know. She ain't just getting it done by the jumper. She also giving the ball up. On the men's side of the house, I don't want to be biased. And I love Klingman and I love UConn. But here's where, how this is going to go down. I think if UConn wins, I think Klingman becomes player of the game. National player of the year she still goes to Zach Eady. I think he's been consistent. He's been averaging. He set a record. He broke Shaquille O'Neal's record with 20 straight double-double 2010 games. That's very difficult to do. And I can't believe today I heard on uh, in one of the, the, the reports 
that he was going to be a late first round, early second round draft pick? Are you insane? Because they tell me he can't guard anybody at the next level. Once again, as he told Rick Barnes at Tennessee, he played like that because why? Because you bet against me. So I'm not betting against this young man. I think he's focused. I think that Purdue saw what happened last year. I think that Matt Painter knows what's going on. This is the first time in 30 years they've been back to the tournament, and I think they get it done. I got Purdue beating UConn by three. I think the score will be uh, 89-86, and there you have it. Once again, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for checking in tonight with your boy on the Pull Up Podcast Show as we go out here on March Madness. Thank you for enjoying all month long. We've been celebrating the Women's Month, celebrating women in sports. Obviously, we do all that, and we appreciate you and all the women we've had on the podcast show. And we're going to uh, you know, come back with some more guests in the second season. Whew, I'm going to hit you in the head, just old school Muhammad Ali, rope dope style. But, you know, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, we got to make sure you check back in with us. It's the phenomenal, the phenomenal co-host of mine, Val The Voice. She's coming at you with what interludes talk on Tuesday. Uh, I need to find out who our guest is tonight. Val, you want to want to play who your guest is for us tomorrow night on interludes talk on Tuesday show? Who do we have? Oh, so I, I, I need I need you to talk about your I need you to talk about your company. Please do that, and then yeah, I'll come I was gonna say before we get to tomorrow night's show, let's make sure what we don't do. Doctor Derek talked about it a little bit tonight, and I alluded on it talking to uh, my little cousin Suzette. But we talk about the NIL process all the time. Please make sure you jump in. You want to learn a little bit more about how to brand your athlete with brands and make sure that you get paid for the opportunity. Please make sure you go to www.therise.nil.com. Therise.nil.com. Ownership by none other than your guy, the one and only Coach Tony. And we match brands with athletes to make sure that both people are very satisfied. Also, uh, as we talk a little bit about, I know we just talked about it a minute ago. Val's going to talk, uh, pull that up for us as well about interludes talk on Tuesday again. Now we're coming with the entertainment side of the house. We don't, we want to forget about that, but I got to make sure that Val tomorrow, tomorrow reiterates about her, her bracket because she already done beat me once and I ain't going to let her beat me twice. That we don't do it. <laughs> we, 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 we can't do that. What's going on girl? I have nothing much. I think for tomorrow, it, it's it's a, it's it's unfortunately time to talk about the elephant in the room in the oh, entertainment oh, room. Yeah. Hey, we don't get right the elephant in the room. And in the words of my boy Martin, get to stepping. Uh, oh, we we got we got to talk about. I was going to bring it up last week, but I was having too much fun with my girl CJ Charles. That's my girl. And if you guys haven't bought her book. And haven't had an opportunity to go out and buy Val's book, make sure you hit this QR code and get Val's How DJ Saved Her Life. Tell them about that, Val. Uh, definitely. The book is uh, scheduled to come out on the 5th, but myself and my writing coach and the editors, they have been really, they've been enjoying the book and then pulling more and more out of me. I was on in a writing session just this morning and I'm wow. like, oh my gosh. So it's, it's been very, very uh, uh, rewarding to kind of get the story out to you guys. And so I'm so excited for it. And for myself, being a DJ, while we're going to be talking about the elephant in the room on, on tomorrow, I it affects me. I actually DJ and curate a couple of shows during the week. And there's some songs I'm avoiding because of the elephant in the room that we'll be talking about on tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and we're gonna talk about it because uh, there's another uh, rhinoceros that we stopped playing their particular music. So if we don't stop playing their music, I want to see what we're gonna do with these elephants because you know <laughs> elephants make they make great leather coats, they make good purses, you know all that. I ain't trying to say nothing with Peter, but I'm just trying to tell you we're gonna talk about the elephant in the room. We're gonna close blind. We're gonna we're gonna put the boxing gloves on. We're gonna we're gonna get down. 
<laughs> so come join us on tomorrow night for another episode of interludes extra presents talk on tuesdays and and we thank you guys so much for joining us on tonight on behalf of myself coach tony and val the voice johnson as the producer here it's time to say peace you ready coach peace, peace. <laughs> It's the Pull Up Podcast. It's the Pull Up Podcast. It's the Pull Up Podcast. Pull up, pull up. It's the Pull Up Podcast. It's the Pull Up Podcast. It's the Pull Up Podcast. Pull up, pull up. Bounce the boys and Coach Tony, you know. It's the Pull Up Podcast. So, so. I say it bounce the boys and Coach Tony, you know. It's the Pull Up Podcast. So, so. It's the 